Cooper said likening exaltation and atheism. Firstly, if you look at the title, likening exaltation and atheism, exaltation is in the middle. But when we started, we started with exaltation. So in the title, it's in the middle because of the meaning of all three of them. But when we start, we're starting with the exaltation because it's the important one and the correct one. Exaltation, Tenzi. The creed of the Muslims is called Tenzi exaltation, which is the belief of confirming the existence of Allah while clearing him from resembling the creations. This belief is the haven between the extremes of resembling and denying. Allah refuted both extremes when he said in his book, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Nothing is whatsoever like him, and he is the hearer, the seer. Here, he denied any likeness to himself and confirmed that he is ascribed with attributes. He denied any likeness for himself and confirmed that he is attributed with attributes in this ayah. So that's the belief of Muslims. That's called Tanzeeh. Al-Tahawi said, Whoever does not guard himself from negation and likening has strayed and has not arrived at exaltation. It was narrated about a shafii that he said, Whoever got up to know his creator, and settles on a being whom his thought can encompass, then he is a likener. If he settles on pure non-existence, he is an atheist. And if he settles on a being, meaning one existing, and and admits that his mind cannot conceive him, then he is a monotheist. In Al-Asma'u wa Sifat, Al-Bayhaqi narrated that Abu Sulaiman Al-Khattabi said, الذي يجب علينا وعلى كل مسلم أن يعلمه what is an obligation on us and on every Muslim to know? Is that our Lord is not one with an image or format. For surely an image necessitates a manner of being. And that from Allah and his attributes is negated. The word kafiyah may also be used to mean the reality as said by the poet. The how of man, man himself does not encompass it. So how about the how of al-Jabbar in eternity? He means you cannot encompass the reality of Allah. But since there is ugliness in saying al-Jabbar's how, 
or the how of Allah, the Shaykh composed an alternative line. Haqiqatul mar'i laysa al mar'u yudrikuha fa kayfa yudriku kunha al khaliq al azali The reality of man man himself does not encompass it So how would he encompass the reality of the eternal creator Only Allah knows the haqiqah the reality of his self and attributes. Our knowledge of him is limited to knowing about what is necessary to attribute to him, like knowledge and power. Knowing what is impossible to attribute to him, like a partner. And knowing what is valid, like his creating something or not. Arifai said, Raya to Almarifati Billah Al E. Kanu be Wujudi Taala Billa Kaifin Walla Makan. The ultimate understanding about Allah that the slave can achieve is the certainty in his existence. Exalted is he without a how and without a place. The great scholar Ibrahim ibn Tawbah, also known as Dhunun al-Misri, said, Mahma tasawwarta bi balik, fallahu bi khilafi dhalik. Whatever you imagine in your mind, Allah is different from that. Instead of trying to imagine Allah, we are encouraged to ponder on the creation. As Allah said, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they think about the creation of heavens and earth. This will help us to increase our glorification of the Creator. However, not included in thinking about the self of Allah is clearing Him from resembling the creations by saying, He exists eternally and everlastingly. He existed before time and place. He is not ascribed with any descriptions of humans. He sees without a pupil and hears without an ear or an ear canal. He speaks without letters and sounds, etc. Rather, this is explanation and application of the saying of Allah. Nothing whatsoever resembles him.